everyone, it's Sevi. Let me ask you, what's a good metric for a well-invested build? Well, once you're done with talent levels, weapons, and character ascensions, you're left with artifact farming. By endgame, you're probably spending most of your resin farming in an artifact domain, hoping for the right set, the right main stat, the right base substats, and that when the artifact is leveled up, it's still desirable. But how do you know when you've farmed enough? When do your artifact builds go from good to godly? In this video, I want to discuss one metric of measuring overall artifact build value. This method is via counting substats. Shout out to my theory crafter friend Migo who closely worked with me on this. I'll link his Twitch channel down below. This video is not a deep dive into the hardcore optimization of stats. This could be in a part 2 video if there's enough interest or something you can research elsewhere as it might be a heavier explanation. This is instead just an intro to one simple method of evaluating how much time, effort, and luck went into getting the best artifact stats for your character. If you're an early or mid game player, this isn't something you should concern yourself with yet. But once you've started getting into the grind of late game 5 star artifact farming and character improvement, the Sisyphean goal of min-maxing your substats is something you can start doing. I also want to emphasize that this is highly dependent on RNG, so you shouldn't feel like it's your fault if you have bad artifact rolls. Just treat this as a criteria you can adopt or ignore. Let's first go over some basic concepts about substat rolls. We know that artifacts have a max of 4 lines, and every 4 levels an artifact either gains one new stat line or randomly adds into one of them if you already have the max lines. These are our substat rolls. A substat roll is not a fixed value either, as they have a range which I'll show in the table on screen. That's another layer of RNG, as not only does it have to roll into a desired stat, but you also have to see if the roll is low, mid, or high. Another thing to remember is that characters scale from different stats. Generally speaking, most DPS characters scale on attack. For the solely attack scaling character, defense and HP rolls have practically little to no benefit in overall DPS increase. But for someone like Ito, defense is more desired than attack rolls. However, this does not automatically mean that attack rolls are completely useless as it's still technically a damage boost. Rather, they have less value than getting a defense roll in terms of Ito's DPS increase. There are also some cases of additional scaling, like Ayato who partially scales on HP. While an attack stat is still more valuable, at least HP rolls become less copium. The value isn't too much that it's on par with attack, but not too little either that we can consider such rolls wasted. Now that we've refreshed those basics, here's the fun part, counting substats. First, we have to assign an average range of what is considered one substat roll. Here's a convenient reference table that you can use. So for instance, 7% crit rate is 2 substat rolls, 15% attack is 3 rolls. Note also that these are based on the average of each roll's range. It's entirely possible to have a stat line roll 4 times, but it looks like only 3 rolls. For example, if you have 4 of the lowest crit damage rolls, which is 5.4% times 4, the result is 21.6%. But 3 rolls worth 7% each also results in 21%. Even if you technically rolled 4 times as in the former scenario, it's still effectively counted as 3 substat rolls. You can always round up or round down your count. For instance, if you have 38 EM or 11% attack, then by all means consider them as two substat rolls. There are also stats that have a cap and which can be disregarded in counting under certain conditions. The first obvious one is crit rate. The moment your character gets an effective 100% crit rate value, your excess substats are completely wasted and thus count towards nothing. The second is energy recharge. In team rotations and general combat scenarios, there comes a point wherein a character has too much ER, making their burst costs full long before they can be used again. As this depends on a lot of factors, the ER cap will vary greatly between characters and teams, so you can count ER substats separately and treat their ideal count as a case-to-case -case basis. 
You'll also notice that flat stats are considered too. However, it will usually take 2 or 3 flat attack, defense, or HP stats combined to reach the value of 1% roll. It can vary according to the characters and weapons base stats. Regardless, this is why a percent roll is always better. Let's practice with DPS characters as our standard example. We'll do it together first and try counting the substats of this Sing Cho. While his HP helps his healing, we are focusing on counting attack and crits as these are relevant to his burst sub DPS role. Again, I will count the ER rolls separately and since the total ER stat still falls within the recommended ER range, no rolls are wasted. Take note that, as with most other DPSs, crit rolls are not the only valuable substats here. So Sing Cho's flower has 3 crit damage rolls, 2 attack percent rolls, 2 ER rolls, his feather has 2 crit rate rolls, around 2 crit damage rolls, and around 3 attack rolls. Then his sands has like 1 attack roll because it's flat attack, and 2 crit damage rolls, and 1 crit rate roll. Then his goblet has 1 crit damage roll and 2 crit rate rolls. And finally his circlet has 2 crit damage rolls, 1 ER roll, and 3 attack percent rolls. You can see this character has 24 offensive substats and 3 ER substats in his build. That range of 23 to 27 offensive substats plus their needed ER is considered as a character with a good level of investment. You've put a respectable amount of time into farming for them with enough luck. There's also the consideration that some characters need more love than others. For certain characters that need higher investment to reach a certain power level, having 24 substat rolls on them might not yet be enough. Now try this fishel out, this time I'll let you count it yourself and let's see if we have similar results. Pause if needed. If you counted 30 or 31 substats plus 2 ER rolls, then we have the same count. The 28 to 32 substat range is considered as a very good build, of course given that you still have the ER to back it up with. It shows the dedication that you've spent more time farming, grinding, and rolling artifacts for this specific character than your other characters to ensure that this builds a cut above the rest. Often, it's the main DPSs that reach this range. Now that Fischl almost breached the 33 substat barrier. Those, if they also have the necessary ER, are godly. The only way to get this is by being a hacker man of Hoyoverse or engaging in a cult ritual where you sacrifice virgins during a blood moon. Now here's where it can get confusing, even for me at times. So far, we've used conventional scaling characters. But what about non-conventional scaling characters? It's mostly a matter of determining how much value a certain stat gives to that character's DPS or other utilities if they have it. An interesting case is Shangling, who uses attack, crit, EM, and ER all to a good amount, making her a relatively easier unit to accumulate substats for. But then there are characters whose damage are split scaled or whose stats are piled onto their other stats. Here's how you can count substats for them, but take these with a grain of salt. For example, Albedo's skill scales totally from defense and his burst scales totally from attack at C0. But for the typical Albedo usage, since the DPS share from his burst when used once in a rotation is much less than that of his skill, for simplicity, you can count attack as a half roll. With Ito and C6 Noel, their defense gets turned into attack, but attack percent rolls aren't totally useless and would also read more as a half roll with a defense percent being a full roll. Then there's characters like Ayato and Yae who have small additional scaling from HP and EM respectively. These mainly make rolls into those stats less copium and, in normal circumstances, don't add as much DPS increase compared to an attack percent roll. Under circumstances with numerous attack buffs, however, an attack percent roll will deliver highly diminishing returns. But in general, for convenience purposes, HP and EM for Ayato and Yae respectively can be counted as half rolls. 
Are subset counts important for non-DPS or support builds? Not that much, especially if you're not concerned about their crit ratios. For such characters, you mainly want to pay attention to their utility stat, whether it's a shield or healing that scales from HP, or a swirler that wants a ton of EM, and then check if their energy recharge is sufficient. Counting substats is more reserved to characters that need a higher level of investment, likely your DPSs. So now that you've gotten an overview of the substat counting system, I'd like to encourage you to practice it on your own characters. Try it out on your best built character and let me know in the comments what their artifact substat range is. And again, this is only scratching the surface. I haven't covered stuff like optimizing stats and balancing ratios for character builds. Let me know below how interested you are in a part 2 covering these concepts. But for now, counting substats is a fun and easy way to more concretely measure how good your build is. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care.